and get away with their actions. She said, for far too long, for far, far too long now, we have just given them a slap on the wrist and they now know the law better than most decent, hard-working people do. She also said that to have prevented Gary's death would have been for the police to have acted before this incident. Plenty of police presence warning the youngsters away from our residential streets. She pointed out that alcohol is a big issue and needs to be addressed as soon as possible. For all too young, long, youngsters have been drinking and smoking into the early hours and then deciding to do acts of criminal damage and beat people up as a joke because of their influence by the drink and drugs. And she said we all need to keep a closer eye, especially shopkeepers. And it's not just boys that are becoming more aggressive and violent. Girls are becoming more violent than the boys. And she ended with this appeal. We need to make a stand. And ever courteous, she said, thank you. Now, Helen Newlove tackles a number of social crimes and a number of uh, and issues, a number of challenges us, to us here. She challenges us uh, as parents to take responsibility for bringing up the right sort of youngsters with improper boundaries. She challenges the government and the criminal justice system to put in place appropriate deterrence and responses particularly to alcohol and drugs. She challenges us, the police to patrol, to provide visible presence and to take decisive action. She challenges shopkeepers and widens the remit to business. We all have a role to play and she ends with that rallying cry. We all need to make a stand. Well, I think I agree with most of what Helen Newlove says. I think that we must act together to achieve them. I think that it's also incumbent on me, because the police do come in for criticism uh, from Helen, to outline briefly some of what the police are doing, together with others, to tackle some of the social crime problems she has described. First of all, neighbourhood policing. A quiet revolution in our policing style. Every neighbourhood in Slough, a clearly defined community, will have at least one dedicated, named, identifiable police officer, with support from at least one dedicated, named, identifiable police community support officer to work with local people through groups called NAGs, Neighbourhood Action Groups, who identify local priority problems and then take action to solve the problems. And if you haven't uh, been involved in this, then I urge you to get involved, to get involved in these uh, local neighbourhoods and get involved in your neighbourhood action groups and work to solve some of the problems that we're talking about this evening. You won't be surprised to know that antisocial behaviour is the top of the list of those priorities in most cases. Um, and we're working uh, uh, really strongly with partners, particularly the local authority, to identify and tackle problem individuals, um, gathering information, prosecuting people in court. And each of my local police areas has an antisocial behaviour officer to support neighbourhood officers in dealing with the problem. Alcohol and drugs. We work very closely with the licensing teams at our local authorities to ensure we keep a tight control of licensees. We have very few problem licensees in Slough, and that's because of all of our hard work. Um, we've run recent responsible alcohol sales campaigns using government funding to tackle uh, the problem of underage drinking. And you may also have seen publicity around Operation Falcon, our uh, drugs initiative, which we use to continually crack down uh, on cannabis factories, drug dealing, crack houses and so on. <laughs> and in violence, we uh, spend the month of December working hard on an initiative to reduce violence and we saw significant falls in the number of violent incidents in Slough over that period. And you will see that we have operations every Friday and Saturday night, officers with a dedicated mission to ensure that it is us who control the streets, not the drunks and the hooligans. My brief, indeed my exhortation to my staff, is to do, for them to do all in their power to make sure that we don't have the needless death of another caring, loving and funny family man, such as we knew love, on our streets. I was in this hall on Thursday evening, and I'm actually quite glad that on Thursday evening it was empty. And the reason why there was a meeting on Thursday evening was because the police and the local authority and others were concerned following a number of raids that had happened on homes in this neighbourhood, uh, an operation that you might have seen reported on the media and the press. 
And the reason I was glad it was empty then is because it was a sign that this community had trust in the way that the operation was conducted. And uh, that it hadn't been something which had been felt intimidating to people, but had felt reassuring to people. And I think that's a good thing. And I think it is a recognition that when an operation is done well and goes with the grain of community feeling and is built on trust, and people recognize the uh, existence of that trust and understanding, uh, then actually... Uh, one can do operations at the state, police officers, you know, with lots of them and flak jackets and all of that stuff, can actually do things which are apparently quite intimidating, but actually they're helping to solve a problem that people recognise. And we can all feel confident and feel safer as a result of it. One of the reasons why that can happen is because there have been a series of conversations over time where there's been real engagement between police and other public authorities and citizens. But I actually think it's really important that people in positions of authority listen. But I think there's something else that's really important. I think it's really important that all of us speak. That we don't just leave it to someone else. You know, there's a Christian parable uh, about walking on the other side and everyone ignoring, but the Good Samaritan crossed the road and looked after the guy who everyone else thought might have been a drunk or antisocial or whatever sitting in the corner and actually helped him. And I think there's something that goes on like that in every community of people who think, someone else will report that person who always dumps the litter. Or someone else will intervene there or someone else will and we don't do it ourselves and there's a price to pay there's a big price to pay and the price is that the level of uh, antisocial behaviour and disorder just creeps up it just gets a bit bigger because we don't do our little piece to make sure that someone who can do something about it is aware of it or indeed to do something ourselves. One of the problems about, that people said about Gary Newlove was that he was a have-a-go have a guy who said, you have to behave. Now let me declare myself, I'm a have-a-go woman. When I see people dropping litter, I go up to them and I say, will you pick it up? And actually almost everybody does. They, don't, they, they feel very offended by the fact that I've done it, but almost everybody does. But I think the fewer people who do things like that, the more people will drop litter, and the fewer people will pick it up when someone like me does it. They'll just think I'm a mad old lady. And I think that all of us can actually play a role in making our society a better place for all of us. And that means little things like that. It means Reporting. It means having the courage to be a witness, not saying that someone else should do it. It means just asking people about their behaviour. It means forming relationships with people in your neighbourhood. Just this afternoon, I was the other side of the road um, in Charvey High Street, in one of the playgrounds there, talking to a bunch of children about what they wanted in their playground, talking to their parents with them about what would make a... A, a right kind of play strategy for young people around here. Actually, if public authorities listen to and respect people and create opportunities for young people to play, to engage, to listen and be listened to, I think that we can have a society in which actually it is safe and sensible to have what's written up behind you, love for all and hatred for none. Wa shadu Allah.